Hi, today we're going to have a look at how to optimize an image for our website, to use with our website basically. This image which we're going to be working on is just an image of a tile. It's got a size of 1.7 megabytes, which is pretty massive. Obviously, if, if we're thinking about publishing this on a, on a website, it would take time to load. In which case, obviously, you would see nothing for a while and then just image basically loading in. Uh, the dimensions of this image are 898 by 900 pixels, which seem to be quite... If, if you look at the size of the dimensions of the image and then compare it to the size, that's quite massive size for this sort of dimensions. And the reason why it is so big, if we go to the Photoshop, is because if we open image and then we go to image size, it's because its resolution, DPI, uh, dots per inch, is 300. Usually uh, web images have about 72. But look what's going to happen when I type in 72. As you can see, our dimensions have also changed. And this is not quite what we want. So we're going to reverse it back to 300. We want to keep our width and height the same uh, value, but just change the resolution. So if we untick this resample checkbox, and now if we change it to 72, these values will still change, but now if we click on resample again and change centimeters back to pixels, you can see the dimension stayed the same. Now if we save it, another thing we want to do is to make sure that the image doesn't exceed certain dimensions, let's say. You don't have to do it, but you might basically come across the situation when this is going to be useful. So we go to the file, then we go to automate, and then we go going to use the fit image. And we want this image to be uh, enclosed within maximum 900 pixels, whether it's width or height. We don't want the image to be larger than 900 pixels. So that's why we specify in both of these fields. And then we don't want to enlarge. If image is smaller than 900 pixels, we don't want to enlarge it. So, so, so leave it as it is. So if we click on OK, and that's the image now ready for saving. Now, if we save it for web, obviously, you can see this specific image. If you uh, have a look at the mode, it's CMYK, which is usually for print. So what we're going to do is change the mode as well. So we go to the image mode and change it to RGB, which is basic for display. And now we go to file, save for web. And if we drag the save for web dialog window here, you can see we've got an optimized image, which is about 90.38 kilo which is quite a difference if if we compare the original one. If I put two uh, next to each other, you can see 2.31 megabytes here. It shows in Photoshop comparing to 90.38 kilobytes. Uh, we're using this JPEG and I'm using quality about 54 up to 60. You can obviously compare it to see the difference. There's not much of a difference if you ask me. We are using JPEG extension uh, simply because it's a bitmap. For bitmaps, we use JPEG uh, compression. Uh, bitmaps, in other words, images which are taken with the camera. Other type of the image would be a graphic, let's say made in Illustrator or any, any other program, basically. Uh, in which case, uh, you would be saving this as PNG or if you prefer a little bit older extension GIF. My recommendation goes on to PNG. Uh, if, if it's not a bitmap, uh, then simply use PNG. Uh, so 54 is going to be fine, uh, blur set to null, uh, and then simply save the image, and you can save it obviously wherever you want, I'm going to save it, update it, or give it any other name, click on save, and that's our image done, we can now close the, the original image, and that's everything in this tutorial.